All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. Dean Castronovo's remarkable return to the band journey. Uh, I didn't think I would see it because the band had just hired this new rhythm section, right? People were hyping Narada Michael Walden on drums and uh, Randy Jackson, who has yet to show up to play bass. Uh, at least on tour with the band, and it's rumored that he might not show up with the band. Still not sure about that. But with all of that happening, people were like, okay, this will be a great lineup. And uh, lo and behold, a couple weeks before the band is about to tour, uh, we see Dean Castronovo at a rehearsal, and people are sending me all of these images of Dean, and then Narada is still there, and... Um, Marco Mendoza playing bass. So it's pretty cool that Dean is back. How did Dean get back to Journey? Well, obviously he was fired uh, a number of years ago for stuff that happened uh, with Dean's own personal situation. What happened next was the band brought in Steve Smith, who obviously had spent a long time with the band, uh, was with the band for a number of their most iconic albums, including Frontiers and Escape. So Steve Smith had brought a lot to the table before. He brought a lot of that stuff back. However, <clears throat> rumor had it, and this is on good authority that Steve Smith wasn't all that uh, thrilled to be in the band. In fact, um, uh, I think it was Neil Sean had tweeted out or posted on social media that this was more about the money than about the chemistry or enthusiasm for new material. It was also rumored that Smith didn't want to record new material with a band. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, Steve Smith, not that he ever mailed it in on stage. I think he was always a professional, uh, high quality drummer. I just don't think he had really the enthusiasm or the passion for what the band was doing today. He was just kind of methodically playing the hits and uh, doing what he does on drums. Steve Smith is more jazz oriented, more orchestral in his approach to drumming. He is a top-notch drummer. Nobody is going to take that away from him. Uh, not me, not Steve Perry back in the 1980s when he fired Steve Smith um, along with Ross Valerie. What's kind of interesting though is that Valerie and Smith show up to take the band to court basically and say, Hey, we want our golden parachute. You know, there was this coup and then there was this coup attempt and don't know all the details to that. I have reported on that. And it was kind of confusing. Rumor had it that Steve Perry was in on that. And then Perry came along later to say he had nothing to do with that. So I'm not sure if it was true that he was in in that or not, maybe he was, and then he backed away. I don't know. Bottom line is those guys got something out of it. They settled out of court. Uh, I think they were looking for residual income. Basically, they had been in the band for a long time. It's kind of like you work for a company for a long time and you deserve a pension. That's kind of what this is about. You know, Steve Perry, you know, founding, not founding member, but really important to the band got the band to new heights. When uh, he was forced out, he basically got a golden parachute and a pension, you know, and is still reaping some of that even today, which is crazy to think about. But this is what happens when you lawyer up after you get that um, phone call from Jonathan Cain. So again, let's fast forward. Uh, Dean Castronovo, hanging around with uh, the Dead Daisies for a number of years. Last year, the timing apparently wasn't right for him to come back after uh, Valerie and Smith were dismissed from the band. Although I believe he was asked to come back at that time, uh, he was with the Dead Daisies, had committed to doing some things with that band. And then that band basically ended up kicking him to the curb or he had a disagreement with them uh, it's rumored again that the Dead Daisies may not be the greatest working environment for people who join that corporation. It's basically a 
a group of musicians and it's never the same group. People uh, come into the band, like Glenn Hughes is currently in the band. John Karabi was in the band. Um, the Dead Daisies to me are an interesting group, but I don't know. Uh, their, their music to me is very esoteric. It's that generic hard rock sound, um, but it's nothing special. It's nothing out of the ordinary. But I think it does provide some financial security for people who join it because um, the owner of the franchise has some rather deep pockets. So I think that was something that Dean Castronovo probably wanted a part of because I'm pretty sure he was a hired hand when he was in Journey. Now, maybe he's back, maybe things are a little bit better for him on the financial side of things, but really Journey needed Dean back. Um, Narada needed to learn uh, all of the music in this group and Dean Castronovo, I think, provides uh, a bit of a teaching side to things. He also provides stability on drums and Dean, rather than being an orchestral or jazzy kind of drummer like uh, Steve Smith is, he's more of a straight ahead rock and roll drummer. Uh, but I think he can do pretty much anything at this point. He's really grown as a vocalist and as a drummer, and it shows. Um, he's a double threat. Um, and right now, the band really needs support both with drums and with vocals. Uh, and anyone who tells you that they don't need support on vocals, uh, I see these videos that get uploaded and then people make these comments. And the people who make the comments who say, gee, I don't understand why so many people think this isn't very good. And I'm talking about the vocals, right? Um, and I can hear it. And again, I'm not a musician, but I can still hear it. So all of the people who think that maybe Journey could do better vocally I don't think those people are wrong. I think they've been right for a few years now. And Dean Castronovo gives the band stability both on vocals and um, on drums. And I would even suggest that with Narada still there, Randy Jackson still hasn't shown up yet. You've got Marco Mendoza out there. Um, but with Randy gone and with Narada as a support player, and even a guy who could support Dean if he decided to um, just be a singer. Now, this would be up to everybody in the organization to make Dean a front man. Dean does not want to be a front man. He would rather hide behind the drum kit. He feels secure there and safe there. But who knows? We, we don't know. Um, it might be awkward for Dean Castronovo to be a front man, but vocally speaking, uh, he is the best um, representation of that Steve Perry legacy sound that the band has had since uh, Steve Augeri blew his voice out. So you have to look at all of the factors here that would make Dean the singer of this group. Do I think he should be the singer? Yes, I do. Um, is he maybe a little bit too busy if he's um, doing a lot of drumming? to be the vocalist in this group? I don't know. You'd have to, you'd have to ask him because he would have to be a singing drummer. He'd have to be like Don Henley back there. And that is a very high degree of difficulty. I mean, your body, I think, just knows what to do. If you're that trained in this and you're that good at what you do, but um, this is a difficult catalog, you know, and you could say, well, Don Henley, in the Eagles singing the songs that uh, he had in the Eagles, that's a difficult thing as well. And, you know, Don pulled it off, but Don didn't have to sing every song either. It was Don and Glenn and, you know, Joe and Tim. And so you had uh, people, Randy, you had different people who were singing to give the uh, vocalist and the drummer a break. So in any event, um, it's good to have Dean Castronova back in the group. It was a strange but good surprise to see him at rehearsals and then out on tour. Uh, he sounds great. He is a freak of nature genetically speaking on vocals. Um, he's a guy, I think, like in his mid-50s, and his voice has actually gotten better over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, and I'm sure he's got a lot of gas in the tank to do this 
uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, hopefully, he's earning some good money because he's really playing a big role in uh, making Journey, you know, have this ability to get back out there and perform at a very high level. So we shall see if they give him more and more vocals, more and more singing parts, basically, uh, lead vocals on more songs. Um, you're probably going to hear him doing like Still They Ride or Mother Father. Those are great songs, and it's good to hear him doing those songs. But you need to go back and listen to his generation radio versions of like Don't Stop Believing," and Faithfully He Does back in like 2006 or whatever, where he, you know, he's behind the drum kit. He holds up a picture, I believe, of his family. And I know there's some irony there based on all the things that have happened since. But I think Dean is on the right path. And I think he is a good guy and has learned a lot from what happened to him. So, uh, or what he did, let's just be honest. I'm not trying to make him a victim of anything, but uh, I'm just glad to his, you know, see him back in Journey because he's going to add a lot. And um, if you go watch those Journey Through Time concerts where he's singing, Greg Raleigh is there. It's like a holy crap Batman on steroids. It's just, I don't know. You get the goosebumps on top of goosebumps because it's close. Um, if you're a Perry fan, I think Dean helps you cope the most with Perry not being in this group. So that's my video on the topic, a little bit rambling and long-winded, but it's just good to have Dean Castronovo back in Journey.